Look, it's a ruined building. And it's actually made from MDF. And I'm going to show you how I build it. So, I bought this ruin kit before I bought my MDF game board. And after I built the MDF game board, I realized that this ruin is kind of from the same product line. And that it actually fits really well on the game board. What a surprise. So I knew, down the road, I would make two pieces out of that one ruin, for spacing and playability reasons. I also knew that I'd add a base to it, but before that I just build it up like the instructions told me to. Building up MDF kits is just punching pieces out of their sprue and putting them together. But nothing is perfect, and this is why you see me cutting some pieces down or filing them smooth. I also like to glue everything together with wood glue. You don't have to use glue, a lot of these kits have a really snug fit, but I don't want mine to ever fall apart. And if you decide to use glue on your MDF kits, you should always drive it the pieces before you put glue on there. This kit has rebar sticking out of the broken walls. To differentiate rebar from the rest of the walls, I tried to make it thinner and give it a rounded shape by cutting away layers of MDF and filing it down. This method didn't work as well as I wanted to, but I also did not invest that much time in it, so yeah. If you do it that way though, your rebar might still not look very rebar-y, but you might end up with some extra rebar that you can use on your building. All depends on how thick the layers are that you cut away from the rebar. At some point I started to give the building some battle damage by cutting away edges with my hobby knife, adding scratches to pieces or by gluing on some MDF rubble in some places where the kit indicates destroyed structures. I also used a pin vise to drill out some bullet holes. Here I'm beginning to separate this one ruin into two. To begin, I marked out where I wanted to cut it in half. I later used those lines as a rough orientation, because using a hobby knife to cut a fully assembled MDF kit apart is not easy. It's more like hex slashing through there and hoping you can fix it later on and still make it look good. So if you like being mad at yourself and your decisions and are willing to invest a good amount of time into a mediocre cutting job, use a hobby knife. But using a fret saw or coping saw will make your life a lot easier, I suppose. After cutting the ruin, I glued the different floors together. I also added more battle damage, one extra ladder and extra rebar. Then I began cutting out the foam board bases. My MDF game board restricted me to a maximum length of 20 cm, but I decided to go with 19 cm, so nothing will go wrong size wise. I wanted the ruins foundation to look like it has broken apart and some parts of the sprue looked interestingly like foundation pieces, so I cut them out and glued everything down. The 
The inside of the ruins looked very uninteresting, so I added some floor tiles to give it more detail. These floor tiles are made from thin cardboard, but you could use any material that is thick enough to stay visible below some coats of paint. To get the distance between the single tiles right, I first dry fitted them in and then began to glue them down. I got my runes on the base, so now I'm gonna cover everything in rubble. So I'm doing the same recipe as always, covering the foam board base and wall filler, also putting wall filler on all the other spots where I want rubble piles, and then sprinkling some broken plaster plates, decoration granules and sand all over till I'm happy. As you can see, I also added one of my self-made barrels I made in my last ruined building video. By the way, this filler does not shrink while it dries, and you should look for that too if you don't want your wall filler covered foam board bases to warp. To give all the walls some more texture, I stippled on watered down filler. I then sealed all the sand in by painting on a layer of watered down wood glue. My base coat for everything is great gesso, nothing special. I then covered everything in my trusty self-made black wash. It's basically a watered down acrylic paint, 20 parts water and 1 part paint. Here, I'm sponging on metal color on every metal surface. Now I'm dry brushing all the pieces with two different grey tones. The first pass is a medium grey all over, and the second pass is a lighter grey, more from above and more selective. So, due to me painting different colors in the wrong order, I basically got rid of most of the metal parts. So my pro tip is to first dry brush the grey parts, after that stipple on metal paint. But here I am, thinking that there wasn't a well readable difference between the grey and the metal paint anyway, so now I'm using orange, black and brown paint to make all the metal look like it's rusted and corroded, which leaves me with a nice good looking contrast. So, here are the finished pieces. I'm quite happy with how these turn out, but there are some spots where I could have put on more wash to get a bigger contrast between my shadows and highlights. But it is how it is. I hope their modularity will serve me well in my next battlefield. Thank you very much for watching till the end. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up, maybe leave me a comment. If you're not subscribed yet, feel free to do so. Stay safe and till next time. Goodbye.